want to say praise the Lord. Good morning this Sunday morning afternoon. I'm running just a little bit late. And I just want to say welcome in the name of Jesus. This is Keith Parsons, Pastor of Saving Grace. Uh, come to sing a few songs for you and give you a little bit of word. Those of you that tune in, I pray that it blesses you. Amen. So, uh, just want to say uh, I appreciate you showing up. Amen. To those that you tune in, amen. And praise God if it blesses your heart. I pray to share share this with somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Across the nation, the Ten Commandments are coming off the wall. In the schools, the name of Jesus is an offense in the class and in the hall. All God bless America, no longer rings across this land. are changing so rapidly these days 
Amen. Father, I thank you for this day. I pray for your presence, your spirit, your anointing. God, I pray, Lord, not only me, but those watching, that you'll touch us, Father. God, let your word enter into our heart, God. Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, we praise you. Things are changing so rapidly today, church. Amen. And those watching. Amen. You know, we need an eye to see today. We need an eye to see what the enemy's doing in this world today. Amen. It's not a time to be asleep, but it's time to be awake. It's time to attend, attain our ears. Amen. Attain, tune our ears into what the Spirit is saying. Amen. I'll begin to read in the Word. I'm going to read to you here in a little bit, probably by the grace of God. Begin to read how Jesus Himself was taught and led by the Spirit of His Father. Amen. Even so, He sent you and I the Spirit. Amen. To lead and to guide us into all truths. This world is turning into a big lie. It's getting worse. This world has been a lie. Amen. I'll tell you, there's only one truth. Amen. This world has been a lie. Amen. I'm going to say it again. There's only one truth. Jesus said, I'm the way and I'm the truth and the life. Amen. Now, I'll tell you what. Amen. They can set up their leg legislation. They can set up their laws. They can try to ban whatever they want to ban. But I'll tell you, God is the God of heaven and earth. Amen. Jesus said he was the word. He said, I am the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Praise God. I'll tell you, Jesus is in control. This world, this system's going to fail. But I'll tell you, God is going to stand. Amen. God of heaven and earth. Amen. He's the one that created all things. Praise God. And I'll tell you something. He's going to be the one to rule and reign when his kingdom comes. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, the scene where they tried, I don't know if I have or not. My wife told me about it. Amen. Trying to ban the Bible in California. Oh, church, it's time for God's people to get up and take a stand. Amen. We ain't to carry it off in our homes. We're not to carry it off. Amen. And back down when man says you better do it, we, we submit and say, okay. No, you do what God says to do. When it pertains to God, you're to obey God. I'm to obey God. Amen. Praise God. I'll tell you something. Amen. He gave us a spirit of not a fear, but he gave us a spirit of, amen, love and a sound mind. God set us free today. Praise God. I'll tell you something. This this song come to my heart today, and I want to sing it for you. These days across the nation, the Ten Commandments are coming off the wall. In the schools, the name of Jesus is an offense in the class, in the hall. Oh, God bless America, no longer sing rings across this land. Never was a time it's now for God's people to get up, take a stand. That's the truth. I'll tell you something in today's world. Amen. Jesus said, you'd be ashamed of him, you'd be ashamed of you. Amen. I'll tell you something. Amen. Just like we just had Christmas. Amen. I tell you, it gets offensive to many. The Bible said to the Jews, it was a stumbling block to the Greek, an offense. Let me tell you something. Amen. If Jesus is an offense to you, if he's a stumbling block to you, amen, today, you need to check something in your heart. Amen. I'll tell you, when it comes to, to proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ and, 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 and proclaiming the name of Jesus, amen, and you're afraid of those, what they're going to do or what they're going to say to you, you better check your heart. Amen. Jesus is coming. Amen. I'll tell you something. Amen. The word's got to be spread. Amen. The word, uh, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ needs to be going across this land. Amen. Tr men try to take this holiday and make it to a man in a red suit. Let me tell you something. It's about a man called Jesus Christ. You want to lie? Amen. You tell your lie. But I'll tell you, it's about the it's about the, red, the birth, the death, and the resurrection of a man called Jesus Christ. I don't care what tradition teaches. Amen. When you knock Jesus out of it, amen, you're wrong. Amen. I'll tell you something. Amen. Jesus is the one that came. Amen. And was born on the day. Amen. We got marked as Christmas. Jesus is the one that shed his blood on, on Calvary for you and I. If you're ashamed, if you're ashamed to produce something that's got religious things concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, you better check your heart. It's not in the right place. Amen. I tell you, God is coming. Amen. The Lord is coming back. Amen. He's coming back after a church without spot or wrinkle. Praise God. You know, they they turned around and when I was growing up, they took prayer out of schools. Now they're taking down, they're taking down the Ten Commandments. Amen. Praise God. They're coming against the church. Amen. Pretty soon they're going to be telling you what you can and can't preach. 
You're becoming a hatred. You're becoming a threat. Amen. You're becoming a terrorist. Amen. Praise God. Because you preach against sin. We can't go along with sin because if we go along with sin, then we're part of sin. We never knew Jesus in the first place. We got to be born of the water and of the spirit. We're not born. We may be born in this world by the seed of man, but praise God, one day God's son grace found you and I. Amen. And God, by God's grace, amen, we were saved. We were washed and we were cleansed by the spirit, by the blood of Jesus Christ. There's a new birth, as he told Nicodemus. You must be born of the water and of the spirit. If you're not born of the Spirit, you're not born again. Praise God. Amen. Let me tell you something. Amen. Jesus shed his precious blood. Amen. For the church. Amen. For the sins of this world. It's time to cry out to this world that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Praise God. As I said, they try to take in the Ten Commandments. Amen. They're taking things out of schools. Amen. People's offended when you come about the name of Jesus. You go to walk somebody on the street. They don't want to hear about this man called Jesus no more. Things are becoming evil more and evil. Amen. Sin is becoming rapid. Good is be good is be called evil, and evil is being called good. Amen. Sin is being accepted today. Amen. Sin is something that's become comfortable in somebody's heart today. Amen. No longer fear the wrath of coming. Amen. No longer John said, "Who hath, hath warned you to flee the wrath to come?" I tell you, God's coming. Amen. God's coming. Jesus is going to set up his kingdom. Amen. You've got the warning. Amen. But if you water water in the, in the hog pen, amen, you don't want to give your life to Jesus. Amen. You've been warned. Amen. God sent his word. He sent, he sent warning to this world. Amen. There's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. Praise God. So many sit back and just let them do what they want to do. It's time for the church of Jesus Christ to arise. Amen. And say, thus saith the Lord. Amen. It's harsh, but it's the truth. Praise God. Tell sin for what it is. Amen. Praise God. Cry out against it. Amen. But according to the word of God, not to be a judge, but according to the word of God of what sin is. Sin separates you and I from God. Sin sends our soul to hell. Amen. Praise God. For God is grace. You know, the, the law... The law was our schoolmaster. The law showed us what sin is. We could not go by the law. We could not live by the law. That's why God sent his son Jesus. The schoolmaster showed us and revealed to us what sin is. Amen. You, The word of God reveals to you and I what sin is today. And when we see what sin is, it's up to you and I to whether to lay it off or keep it on us. Amen. we got to lay aside the, sin, the weight and the sin that so easily beset us. we got to come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior today. Amen. The law as a schoolmaster. Amen. Showed us that we were weak in the flesh. We could not do it. We need somebody to come, amen, and fulfill the law when Jesus Christ did that very thing. He fulfilled it to the letter, amen. And when Jesus died on the cross and he said it is finished, praise God, he did it for you and I. And when Jesus come out of that grave in a glorified body, amen, he's showing you and I that he overcomes sin. He can overcome death. He overcome hell. Amen. Praise God because now that he died for you and I in our stead and he rose out of that grave in a victorious body. Amen. When we're born of the water and the spirit, we're going to raise again one day and when that call comes forth in the name of Jesus in a glorified body like it under his. How many want to be with Jesus one day? Praise God. He laid aside his glory at his home from above in the likeness of man he came to declare his father's love to a world lost and dying separated by their sin God sent the perfect sacrifice for to redeem man. He was broken for me, so torn and bad. Nailed to a tree, the 
price of my sin was he so willing to die that I might live the son of God he was broken for me with his words he created this world that we know with his precious breath and became a living soul in the likeness of a father he created us to be but through sin came separation Sacrifice there had to be. He was broken for me, so torn in pain, nailed to a tree. The price of my sin was he, so willing to die. That I might live The Son of God He was broken for me He was broken for me So torn and bad Yes, nailed to a tree So willing to die that I might live the Son of God, He was broken for me. The Son of God, He was broken for me. You know, the day they met in the upper room that day, Passover, amongst the disciples that night sat the Lamb of God. This world did not see him for the Lamb of God, but he was the Lamb of God. Do you see Jesus as the Lamb of God today? Let me tell you something. When they met in that upper room, there was something he had to tell them. He began to have the bread. He was referring to his body as he took the bread and he began to break. He said, this is my body that is broken for you. First in Corinthians, but Jesus was telling him, take and eat. You see, referring to Christ, his body was broke for us. That's why I wrote that song. His body was broke for you and I. Amen. And we are to partake of that broken body. We're to accept Jesus for who he is and take a beat of him. Then he took the cup and they each had to drink that cup. You know, we got to drink it. Oh, Jesus said, taste. Drink. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the sins of many. Jesus bore our sins. Him being that bread in John chapter 6, it being that bread was broken for you and I. Just like the school our taskmaster, the law was our, our school, the, the law was our schoolmaster, I'm sorry. We couldn't keep the law, but God sent a son that would. The bread he broke that day in that upper room, the cup he drank from. As, it, as pertaining to the garden, when Jesus took the cup, of death and drank it for you and I. He said, except it any other way, Father, let this cup pass from me. But Jesus took that cup, that cup of death, and he drank it for you and I. Jesus bore the sin of the whole world. Amen. And he shed his life's blood for it. I thank God for what he did for you and I that he sent his only begotten son to die in our stead. 
You see, we're guilty before God. We were guilty before God. Lost without hope, dying in the world. Jesus said, except you believe I'm he, you'll die in your sins. Lost in a world without hope. John said, the book of John talks about, around the 8th chapter about Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. You know there's a light in all this darkness that's going on. I'm already getting into the message. There's a light that's shining in the darkness that's going on today. Y'all locked up. Can't go nowhere. Anxiety, depression setting in. Well, I'll tell you something. There's somebody with you today. You might be sitting there alone. There's somebody with you today that said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm with you all the way, even unto the end of the world. If you got your heart in Jesus, he's with you. And I'll tell you something, amen. He won't bring turmoil. He'll bring comfort. He said, my peace I give unto you, not as this world give. This world ain't going to give you peace. You already see that. You see what's going on. There's nothing but turmoil. There's nothing but hate. Amen. There's nothing but anxiety just pouring out like a river. But Jesus said, my peace I'll give unto you. This world, this world is going to fade. But them that abide in Christ are going to abide forever. Praise God. Them that abide in Christ are going to abide forever. Jesus began to speak unto the Jews one day. In John chapter 8. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'll tell you, amen, praise God. I, I get so stirred up sometimes I, I lose my place and I just get, my mind gets her going 100 miles an hour. And Jesus said he spake words many believed on him. Do you believe on Jesus today? Do you believe on the word that what Jesus spoke is truth? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord and the Savior of today? Verse 30. One, then said Jesus to the Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Simply means that to believe upon the word of God, not just part of it, not, not just continue believing for a while, or in, in like the parable of the sowers, you know, you, you get a little bit of it, you receive it with joy, then after a while it's just a bypass. You know, I was thinking today as I sit on the couch, I'll get back to this. I was thinking today as I sit on the couch, you know something, amen? We get clean by the blood. We get clean by the Spirit. We get washed in the blood. Amen. And when we get washed in the blood, when Jesus forgives us of our sins, then, then the Word of God, we need the Word of God to be placed in our heart. And I got to thinking about, you know, I go in and I get cleaned up. The very next thing I do, as in the book of James, the very next thing that I do is, is I look in the mirror. Because if I don't look in the mirror, I don't know if my hair is just right when I go to walk out. Amen? I go to look in the mirror, and when I go to look in the mirror, I got something to call a comb. Amen? Some of you got a brush. Amen? That, that, that I get a hold of. Amen? And I just begin to comb my hair just the way that I like it. Just the way that it goes. The way that it's been laid. Amen. And I'll tell you something. But but you know it's the truth though. Amen. When you're looking in the mirror. You've got a reflection of yourself. Do you see this? This will reflect you. If you believe upon the word that Jesus spoke. This will reflect your heart. This is a revealer of the secrets of the heart. This will lead and guide you into all truths. Jesus said the words I speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life. Amen. Y'all know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm speaking simplicity here. Amen. You go into the bathroom, amen, or in your bedroom, and you look into a mirror, you can see exactly how you're dressed. Amen. You can exactly see how your hair is. But the main point that I'm trying to get to is when you look into that mirror, you're seeing exactly what you look like. Amen. Praise God. Let me tell you something. When you get into the Word of God and you truly desire Jesus to be your Lord in your life, amen, you get into the Word, it's like looking into a mirror, if it's all right to put it that way. It'll show you how to walk. 
It'll show you how to talk. It'll show you how to dress. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'll tell you, Jesus Christ is the only one that will take us to eternity. Amen. This old world got its own form and its own fashion. If you dress like the world, if you act like the world, amen, if you do the things of the world, then you're of the world. Praise God. Let me tell you something. Jesus said right here in the scriptures, I'm going to read it to you. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. They begin to say, but wait a minute, we're free. Are you free today? Let's find out. The Jews said, we're free. We've never been in bondage before. We're the seed of Abraham. Amen. We've never been in bondage. But little did they know, amen, little did they believe, did they remember they not only were been in bondage right then and there, not only to sin, but they was they was in bondage to the Egyptians, they were in bondage to the Syrians, the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greek, and now they're in bondage to Rome. Amen. They're not free, they think they're free. You see, there's many that's walking around today spiritually thinking they're free. Man, tell them that everything's okay. Amen. Trying to make them think that just that little bit of sin's all right. Amen. God understands. No, God said sin is sin. Amen. I'll tell you something. The Bible said sin separates from God. Amen. But the Bible said that whom the Son set free, he's talking about sin, is free indeed. If you still got sin in your life, if I still got sin in my life, if I'm trying to ride the fence, I'm not saved. Amen. Praise God. They said unto Abraham, we be we Abraham's seed and we're never in bondage to any man. Why do you say you shall be made free? Jesus said, Verily, I say unto you, whosoever commits sin, whosoever, listen to this, John chapter 8, verse 34, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin. Who do you serve today? Are you serving Jesus with all your heart? Have you forsaken that old man? Have you laid aside the world? Have you put it behind you and followed after God and his righteousness? Or are you still hanging on to the world? The law was our schoolmaster. Oh, Jesus told them that day when they brought that woman in with adultery, they drug her to Jesus and threw her down in front of them and said, by the law, amen, the, the, the law says she should be stoned because she was caught in the very act of adultery. Amen. But where was the man at that was with her? Where was the man at? Amen. Let me tell you something. You may overlook some, but amen. God don't overlook none. Amen. Praise God. But the law says this woman's to be stoned. Amen. And Jesus knowing that the law said such thing. But let me tell you something. Jesus, Jesus told him something that day. The Bible said that he, now listen closely now. Jesus, he, he just pretended like he didn't hear him and he began to ride on the, in, the, in the dust of that rock right there. He began to write. They kept pounding Jesus. What are we going to do? What do you say? They're trying to they're trying to trick him into breaking the law in their ways, you know. And Jesus writing in there. And then finally Jesus looks up at him and he looked at them and he said, You without sin cast the first stone. Let me tell you something. You might think you're perfect. You might think your righteousness is just right what it needs to be. But if you ain't wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in Jesus, if you're not washing the blood, you're not saved. Amen. Praise God. You might be walking in a religious spirit. Amen. We might be walking in a religious spirit thinking that we're saved. Amen. But we're lost in darkness. Praise God. Jesus said here to them, Why do you say we should be made free? Jesus said in the very little bit I'll send you, whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin. Now listen to this. Church, brothers watching Jesus come to save and to set us free. To be born of the water and of the spirit. We got to be. We can't be. We can't have a foolish religious ways. We got to have a salvation God way. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you something. When the final judgment comes, there ain't going to be no place to run. There ain't going to be no place to hide. Amen. And when God's judgment comes, it's going to be revealer of the secrets of the heart. You know what's in your heart. I know what's in my heart. Amen. Praise God. But the thing about it is, Jesus said right here, Verily I say unto you, whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin. This right here. And the servant abides not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. Again, and the servant, the servant of sin. You might be amongst those today. You might be still in this world of grace today. Amen. We may be having a religious spirit as a lot of those did, thinking that, 
Amen. They followed. They had Abraham as their father. Amen. They're sure enough going to heaven. Amen. You might be following the ways of the world and your heart condemning you thinking you're all right with God. Amen. You might be the servant of sin. Amen. In the kingdom of God that's growing right now. Praise God. I'll tell you, you might be in the midst of it. But I'll tell you something. The Bible said the servant will not abide ever forever in the house. Amen. When God's kingdom comes, those the servant of the devil are going to be cast out. They're not going to be part of it. But the son said he abides forever. Amen. In other words, those of you and I and those that want to abide in Jesus Christ, when that time comes, that wicked servant is going to be cast out. Amen. But I'll tell you, those that's in Jesus, that abide in Jesus, are going to abide forever and ever and ever. Amen and amen. Verse 36 of John chapter 8. If the Son therefore shall make you free, Oh, my Lord, I just can't seem to shake this. I've been there. I just, I'm bound by this. Jesus can set us free from the bondage of sin and death. For whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Phew. God's grace, God's grace God's grace. Jesus said, I am. I am the light of the world. John said, in the beginning of the, in the John there, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Look, here he is. Behold, there he is. There was those that day that stood with John by the river when Jesus began to come. They began to look, fasten their eyes upon Jesus. Even the disciples of Jesus heard him said, Behold the Lamb of God. And they began to follow Jesus. What's the word ringing in your ear? What's the faith ringing in your ear today when you, when you, when, 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 as those did that day they heard, Behold the Lamb of God was taken away the sin of the world. There was many that received him, but there was those there to just get information. And from the very day, they began to think about how to get rid of this man. That's what the world's doing today. They're wanting to get rid of, of Jesus in this system today, in this world system. They're not wanting the truth preached. They want their ears tickled. They don't want Jesus in this system today. In, in people's hearts today, they, they, they talk more about things of the world. They talk more filth coming out of their mouth, amen, than they do the love and the blessings of God. The Bible said out of your mouth, amen, you should not, in other words, come forth sweet water and bitter water. For out of a fountain, it doesn't come that way. Amen. If you're for God, out of your mouth is going to come a true spirit of God. If you have the world, out of your spirit is going to come the spirit of this world. For the word Jesus said, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You know, I feel in my heart I'm being so hard, but I'm not. Amen. Praise God. I'm, I'm not trying to be. But there's coming a day when God is going to judge this world in righteousness. I want to be with Jesus when he comes. I want you to be with Jesus when he comes. He said, I'm the bread of life. Will you take of this bread? Will you accept what Jesus gave for you on the cross? the blood that he shed, will you, will you accept what Jesus did and turn your life over to him? To where you, as I just read, can abide with Jesus forever? It's too long of tickling of the ears, patting folks on the back. It's all right. You see, the preacher's going to answer for his messages. The preacher's going to answer for what he's preaching. God's coming back. You see the things that, that's happened here in 2020. Devastation upon top of devastation. Things just running around the storms, the hurricanes, the earthquakes, the tornadoes, the disease. Open your word. It's been going on for me, but it's going to increase. It's going to increase. I believe, amen, sooner or later we're going to come in to the tribulation period. This world's getting their eyes and their mind off of, of, off of the Word and off of Christ and onto the situations that they go on in this world. 
The church is getting their eyes upon the things of the world instead of the things that's that pertain to God. Amen. For the Bible said, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. It's time to look up. Amen. Not time to look down and follow the ways and the schemes of this world. Amen. I'll be afraid for the thing the world said. You got the word of God. You've read the very back of the book. God wins. Amen. And those that with Christ Jesus, amen, are going to win also. But those in this world are going to lose their very soul if they don't come to know the light. And how are they going to come to know the light if the church shuts up? If the preachers ain't up preaching the truth, the true gospel of Jesus Christ. If you got it in your heart that you're going to offend somebody. If I got it in my heart that I'm going to offend somebody so I don't tell nobody that Jesus loves them or I'm afraid to produce something that's got something about God on it. There's something wrong in my spirit. If in such ways I'm not born of the Spirit of God. For Jesus said he that commits sin is the servant of sin. Brother Rod, if you're on here, pray for me, brother. My heart's in God. My heart's in the Word of God. To stand up for what Jesus, Jesus said in John that he's doing the very things he saw his father do. I want to be led of the Spirit of God. How about you? I don't want to be led by the programs and, and the decisions of this world. I want to be led by the Spirit of God. Jesus came and did what his father told him to do. Now Jesus said that there was coming, that unless he went away, the comforter would not come. I'm getting to a point. That unless he went away, the comforter would not come. We needed that comforter. And when Jesus went to the Father, amen, and sat back upon the right hand of the Father, he sent the Spirit. He sent the Holy Ghost. Now those of you that's Christians that know about the Holy Ghost, I'm going to tell you something. The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of truth, is in you to lead and to guide you into all truths. Many think because they got the Holy Ghost, they got a right to judge somebody. No, you don't. The Holy Ghost is to lead, to teach, and to guide. That's what he's for. He leads and guides us into all truths because his testimony is of Jesus. Now listen, the word said that the Holy Ghost will testify of Jesus, does it not? Jesus, when he was here, he testified of his Father. Do you see the contact there? Do you see the connection there? We are to be led, if we're a true born child of God in the church of Jesus Christ, we are to be led by the Spirit. Jesus said, my words, they are spirit, they are life. We are being led by the Word of God, by the Spirit. We're not to be led by man. Man tells you how to do things. Man tells you how to run things. You're to be led by the Spirit of God. It's coming, people. That persecution is coming here. Watch and see. It's going to try the whole world. It's going to try you. Then where are the Jesus people going to be at? When they come down hard, where's the Jesus people going to be at? If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I forgive their sin. And then will I heal their land. We need a healing, people. We need a healing in the land. We need a healing not only for this virus, for the things that's going on, but we need a healing of the hearing of the ear for the word of God. We need a God, Holy Ghost, sent revival across the land. We need to get back to the cross and hear what thus saith God instead of hiding out because we're afraid of what somebody might do for us. You know, they persecuted it from the very beginning of the church. Amen. In the very beginning of the church age, when the church come out, they come against them. They killed them in the, in the, in the stadiums. Amen. They slaughtered Christians by the thousands. Amen. They come against the Christians. Amen. They didn't want to hear the name of Jesus. 
Does it sound familiar? They didn't want to know about nothing to do with this man, Jesus. They didn't want nothing to do with those, amen, those Christians, amen, and they began to kill him. But I'll tell you something, in the midst of all that, this, all that was going on to the church, amen, a great revival broke out. The gospel began to be spread, amen. Praise God, I'll tell you, you want a healing in the land, you want a healing of the year, amen, begin to turn back to God, amen, and call upon the name of the Lord, amen, God, amen, and repent. God said if they'll repent. God said if you'll seek my face. Jesus said seek the kingdom of God. Amen. First. Amen. If you seek God, he'll draw. If you draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. To get a heart back for God. And not a heart for the world. True religion. True religion. True religion is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Jesus come to seek and to save that which was lost. You and I were lost. This world's lost. And to this very day, he's still seeking. He's still seeking to save. The voice of God's crying out. The voice of God's crying out. Ministers, those of the church, we need to be weeping and and howling between the pulpit and the altar. Not only for the church, but for lost souls. Because when that final day comes, amen, when that final day comes, the Bible said there's going to come a day when they're going to see Him coming, and they're going to cry for the rocks and the mountains to fall on them and to hide them from the face of Him that sits upon the throne. There's coming a judgment day. Amen. There's coming a judgment day, praise God. And the people of this world that's not know Jesus Christ, amen, are going to be cast out. It's a scary, hopeful thing to know that people choose the way of death instead of the way of life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Woe be unto the preacher, the word says. Woe be unto the shepherd that feeds himself and don't feed the flock. To seek the face of God I need to seek the face of God and hear what God says to begin to see souls saved. You know, when it, even in persecution in the time of the, when the first church, when the church began, the preaching of the apostles and those 3,000, 5,000, all these souls saved in one day. One day. <clears throat> one day. Added to the church. Of Jesus Christ. Lord wouldn't that be something. Jesus is coming. Oh my Lord Jesus is coming. And when he comes. And when he sets up his kingdom. Where he said the kingdom of these worlds. Are going to begin to become the kingdom of our God. The Bible said in Revelation there's going to come a day. When there's going to be an angel. That's going to put one foot on the land, one foot on the sea, and declare to him in heaven that time will be no more. We're in a time of grace. We're in a time of grace today. It's time we get, we still got time to search our hearts. We still got time to pray for those lost loved ones and to witness to them about the mercy and the grace of God, about what Jesus did on the cross. I say it a lot. This ain't a game. This is for souls. This is for souls that's lost and dying. That the devil has got bound. Amen. And blinded their eyes to the gospel of Jesus Christ. This world is just being full of darkness. Amen. The devil has got them blind. Blind. He's got them bound by sin. And I'll tell you something. The only thing that's going to set them free is the word of God. It's that anointing. It's God's grace. It's that light that shines in the darkness. When that light shines, amen, it'll pierce that darkness. Amen, and the darkness has got to go. You walk into a dark room, you can't see, but when you flick on that light switch, you can see all things, can you not? Flick on Jesus today. Flick him on. Turn him on in your life. Turn him on in your life today, I pray. Think about it, as I said earlier, and James talked about the mirror. This right here, the word said that he that hath an ear, 
Let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. When the Word of God comes out to you, hear what the Spirit's saying. Let it clothe you. Let it clothe your inward man. Be filled with the Spirit and not with the Spirit of this world. Be filled with God's grace, God's mercy, God's love, and not the hate, the deceitfulness, the lies, the adulteries, the fornication, the wickedness that is rapidly roaming this world because you're lost without Christ in the world. And if we don't have Christ and we're following sin, we're doomed for hell. That's the word of God. That's not Keith. That's the word of God. I don't believe that. Well, then I, I pray that you, that God's word will be revealed to your heart and that you will begin to believe this because it's truth. It's truth. There's a blindness that was in Jesus' day, amen, even to this day. Folks were naturally blind. Oh, my Bartimaeus. Amen. Come, Lord, what do you do, amen, that I may have my sight? Let me tell you something. Amen, the Son of God, the Lamb of God that stood there that day, amen. When he got done, amen, we know part of it that he saw, amen, his eyes were opened, amen. Praise God, I'll tell you something, there's a darkness in the spiritual realm that is just so calloused upon the eyes of folks of this world, amen. And it, I'll tell you what's going to break it, it's going to, it's going to break the light of this world, and that's the gospel. It's going to take Jesus Christ, amen, to open the eyes, amen, to open the ears of those that's deaf, Amen. Open the tongue of those, amen, that's, that's dumb and can't talk. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It's going to take the word. Amen. It's going to take the anointing. It's going to take the grace. It's going to take the blood. There's nothing else in this world that's going to take you through but Jesus Christ. <coughs> I love you. I really do. I love you so much. I want to see souls saved. I want to preach the truth. I want to stand for Jesus Christ in all times and all ways. Pray for me. Pray for this ministry. God loves you. God died for you. He sent his son to die on the cross. It's not time no more to tarry. The word of God said, how long halt ye between two opinions? And, 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 and when, when the man of God stood there before the prophets of Baal, if God be God, serve him. If Baal, then serve him. In other words, it's your choice. Who are we going to serve today? Are we going to serve this world and the devil? Or are we going to serve Jesus Christ? You know whether you're saved or not. I know whether I'm saved or not. But the one thing about it, amen, amen, those that might be playing church and those that, amen, might be walking around believing, God is the revealer of the secrets of the heart. God knows. We need to say, God, search my heart, Lord, and reveal to me. Amen. I'm saying these things in love. Amen. Because you know when the day comes, there's going to be those that's going to say, but God, nobody told me. But God, there ain't going to be no but. It's going to be final. When the final judgment comes, there'll be no place to run. There'll be no place to hide. There's a song I wrote these days across the nation. The Ten Commandments are coming off the wall. Where's your Jesus? In the school, the name of Jesus is an offense. Is he an offense to you? Is he an offense to those that say I'm born again, but Jesus is an offense to you? Uh-oh. In the school, the name of Jesus is an offense in the class and in the halls. I remember the next line. Well, I remember when I was younger, I used to love to get in front of the TV when I was young and listen to that woman. I forgot her name. The boy, she blurred out, God bless America. And the crowd was just a cheering. Today, let me see somebody get out there and sing, God bless America. Amen. And let's see how many is going to stand up and cheer the God of heaven. Amen. But you put a man out there in a football field and watch the crowd go nuts. Amen. The, 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 in the classroom, the, the name of Jesus is an offense in the classroom in the hall. Amen. Praise God. And God bless America. No longer rings across this land. What's wrong? Good is become, becoming evil, and evil is becoming good. That's what's wrong. Amen. People's heart is turned away from God. And now God said, If my people, we need to turn back to God. We need to turn back to the cross. Amen and amen. <coughs> Don't 
go with the scheme and the wisdom and the, and the, and, 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 and the, and the sin of this world. Let's stand for the God of heaven. Because if you stand with the world, you're going to be destroyed with the world. But if you stand with God, you're going to abide with the Son forever. Amen. The world's changed. When I was younger, amen, I used to carry my Bible to school. I used to pack it everywhere I went. Tell people about Jesus. And I'll tell you something. I witnessed to a guy one time down in front of North High School. Tell him about Jesus. I'll tell you, man, I love telling people about Jesus. And I about fell over. Never heard nobody say it before. But you hear it more today. Looked at me when I got done telling him about Jesus. said, I don't believe in him. And I was confounded. You don't believe in Jesus? You see, there's, there's something in you today. This world don't know. There's something in you today called the Son of God that abides in, and dwells in you. Amen. That you know, you know, that you know, that you know that Jesus is the Christ. And to hear the things of the world and hear them say, I don't know him. It ought to prick you to the heart to know that they don't know who you know. Because in you lives the everlasting. In you dwells the great I am. Amen. This world is going to continue to get worse. Day by day, they're going to continue to begin to go against this right here. They don't want to believe in this. That's their choice. But the day's coming when God is going to reveal himself to this whole world. Those that didn't believe in Jesus that day, Jesus told them that day in John. Amen. Jesus told them there's coming a day, he more or less said in so many words, that you're going to look for me, but I'm going to be gone. You ain't going to find me. You're going to search for me, but you're not going to find me. There's only one way to find Jesus. That's with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. That's what, to find Jesus, you've got to go to the cross, not to this world. Jesus said, amen, you say you believe in me, but you don't. You're of your father, the devil. But he said, there's going to come a day you're going to believe. What are you talking about, Pastor Keith? The Bible said there's going to come a day when Jesus is going to stand before them. This is when he comes back. And they're going to say, what are these wounds in your hands? Praise God, they're going to see for themselves. Just like this world's going to see exactly who Jesus is. They're going to say, what are these wounds in your hands? He's going to say, these are where I was wounded in the house of my friend. Amen. Let me tell you something. Amen. There are going to be some wailing, weeping, and wailing that day because they're going to realize that their people did crucify the very Christ that stood before them that day. Amen. When Barabbas said, Whom shall I release unto you? Jesus the Christ or Barabbas? Who are you going to choose today? You're going to choose Jesus or you're going to choose Barabbas? But I'll tell you, whether which one you choose, amen. Let me tell you something. When Jesus comes back, whether you choose, if you chose Barabbas, you're going to realize you chose the wrong one because one day he's going to stand and he's going to reveal to this world exactly who he is. And he is the King of Kings and he's the Lord of Lords. Bless the name of the Lord. I love, if you love, you'll love everybody. If you love, you'll love your neighbor. You won't be backbiting. You won't be devouring somebody. As the word said, the tongue is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. If the love of God's in you, you're not going to be cutting somebody behind their back. This is the word of God and judgment's coming and we need to realize, amen, that we can fall short. That we can have things in our heart that's not like God. There are those of religion, amen, think they've got it. One day they're going to stand before the Lord and he said, he's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. There's true salvation. One way. One way, and Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The voice is crying out today. The voice of warning because you're seeing 
the things coming upon the world today. You're seeing the judgment of God coming upon the world. Amen. I tell you, if you're seeing the shadows of that which is to come, you better be getting your vessels full of the oil. Amen. You better be get out of the slumber and sleep. We, we need to get full of the oil. Amen. And get full of the Spirit. We need to get saved today. If we're seeing the very things coming upon this world today pertaining to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to get ready. But like the Lord said, Jesus spoke to the church in Revelation, all seven of them. And each one of them, he, he, he told them, each one, I know your works. I know your works. He knows what you've done. But he's spoken to some. He's spoken to the churches. Unto the churches, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. We got seven of the churches, and one church we all know about, the church of Laodicea. These churches were active in that time of John. But the Spirit, the Spirit of Laodicea, the Spirit of the churches is still going on. The church didn't die out when them churches were gone. The Spirit, the church is still going on. We're the church. We are the church. The Spirit of Laodicea see, and I'm rich. I'm increased with goods. I don't need nothing. Does it sound familiar? I'm increased with goods. I'm rich. I got everything I need. I'm in need of nothing. But Jesus said, listen now. You're poor, you're miserable, blind, you're wretched. You've lost your first love. What's your first love? Your first love is Jesus Christ. It's not the first woman you met. Your first love is Jesus. The church had lost the first love. For the word said, amen, Jesus said that when he come, the judgment comes, he said judgment will begin at the house of God. And if the judgment begin with the house of God, where shall the sinner and the unworthy of the ungodly and the sinner appear? I may seem hard, but I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to speak it because, amen, it's, it's, it's preaching to me too. I want the truth. I don't want ears tickled. I want the truth. I want to know that if my heart's not right, I'm not going to be with Jesus. I want to know that if there's sin in my life, I'm, I want to know that if there's sin in my life, I'm going to hell and not heaven. I want to know the truth. How about you? Would you rather somebody stand here and preach to you a pretty message Amen. Make you feel good, a patch and send you on your way. Or would you rather somebody say, hey, this is your mirror. Amen. This is going to reveal. This here is the revealing of the things that's going to come. The Lord said to John, Amen, the things that was, which is, and which is to come. Amen. We're now, we're, we know what's going on now, but there's things to come. <laughs> but there's something each one of us can have today. Each one of us today can have salvation. Each one of us today can be born again and know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Each one of us today can inherit eternal life right now. And that's through having faith and belief upon the Son of God. That if thou wilt confess with the Lord Jesus, thy mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be what? Saved. You partake of him. Believe that he's that bread of life. Eat his flesh, drink his blood. Consume Jesus with your life. He's your first love. He's above all things. Without Jesus, you're not going to make it. Our days are short on this world. The Bible says a life is like a vapor of smoke. It's here for a while and then it vanishes. But one thing about it, amen, those that know Jesus, those that know him as their Lord and Savior, as he said here, the servant abideth not forever in the house. Those that, those that partake in the devil's food in his table, they're not going to abide forever. They're going to be cast out. But them that abide in the Son shall abide forever because the Son abides forever. That's the word of God. God loves you. Well, I'd like to preach all day long. I wish I had my other brother Troy here and some other preachers. We'll just keep on preaching all day long. 
I'm not here to tickle ears. I'm not here to try to make a name. I'm here to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Amen. Pray for me. Pray for the ministry. Pray for the churches. Pray one for another. I pray something's helped somebody. Amen. But I want you to know that I do truly love you. I wouldn't stand up here trying to give you the word of God. I wouldn't stand here and stand here and not try to give warning to each and every one of us that we got to be saved by God's grace or we're not going to get out of this world without going to hell. We're not going to get out of this world and make it to heaven without knowing Jesus as our Lord and Savior. I can't stand here and tell a lie. I must tell the truth according to the word. The Bible said, Woe to the shepherd that flee feeds himself and not the flock. The Bible said, cry out and spare not. When he's talking about the house of Jacob, cry out and spare not. Warn my people. The wickedness in the house of Jacob, their sins. Cry loud because if we fail to cry loud, the word said that if we fail to warn the wicked and that wicked man dies in his ways, that his blood is required upon our hands. What are we going to do for Jesus today? Are we going to spread the gospel? Or are we going to just paint a pretty picture for folks and pat them on the back? Are we going to tell them the truth? Or are we going to tickle their ears? Tickling the ears ain't going to make it. You're not only deceiving your own heart, but you're deceiving those that's listening. You've got to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Amen. This is Pastor Keith, Saving Grace Free Will Baptist Church. I love you again. You open it up soon. I want you to come and visit 6969 London Grove Port Road. Amen. Services will be at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. I will be uh, telling here with a day and uh, when we'll be opening up. It's time to get the gospel preached. Folks are hungry for the word. Amen. Let's pray. Pray for this nation. Pray for this country. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And know that I love you with all of my heart. This is Pastor Keith, Saving Grace Free Will Baptist Church. God bless you. God be with you. In Jesus' mighty name.